Chest tubes, we're gonna talk about chest tubes now because you can't talk about hemothorax and pneumothorax without talking about chest tubes because chest tubes is the way to relieve whatever is in that pleural space that is disrupting the normal negative pressure that's within the chest. The chest tube itself is just that, it's just a tube. So most of the time when you think of a chest tube, what you're thinking in your mind is the actual chest tube drainage unit. The actual chest tube that gets inserted into the pleural space is about this big and it has different sizes depending on how big uh, the pneumothorax is and what you're trying to drain from the pleural space. And it's got little holes in it. And those little holes allow for either air to escape or the fluid, whether it be pleural effusion, blood from a hemothorax to escape through and dump into the chest tube drainage unit. This is called a trocar and it just allows for stability of that chest tube during the insertion. And this gets removed and the flexible chest tube stays in the pleural space attached to some tubing. What's that tubing attached to? Let's talk about the chest tube drainage unit. Chest tube drainage unit has three chambers and you need to be very familiar with the reason that your patient has a chest tube in order to know what you're looking at in these chambers. So the first chamber is called the collection chamber. So obviously if you're resolving a new thorax with air coming out of the pleural space, what's going to come through here is not going to be so sensational. You're not going to expect to see anything. Maybe a little bit of serosanguinous from the traumatic insertion, but that's about it. If you're resolving hemothorax and you know blood is expected to come out, you are to mark the little gradations that is on the collection chamber so you know exactly how much output there is and how long it took for that output to accumulate. Um, after thoracotomy surgery is when chest tubes are put in. It's an ongoing um, measure of the output from that pleural space. So it's an important chamber, especially when there is actual fluid coming out. Water seal chamber. Okay, so the water seal chamber does just that. It provides a water seal. What do I mean by that? Well, if you didn't have this water seal chamber, what would prevent air from just going right back up? Depending on you know where the opening is that goes into the pleural space, what would prevent air from going right back up and being pulled back into the pleural space? Nothing, because the chest has that negative pleural pressure constantly trying to pull air into it. So what the water seal chamber provides is a water seal, so that, I call it a straw, so that this straw, when it's below the level of the water seal, will not allow air to get back up into this closed system. So with that being said, one of the implications for setup is that this water seal chamber is filled to the level that it states. So it's usually two centimeters of water pressure and it is marked for you. There's usually this little um, port in order for you to inject that sterile water and your responsibilities are to ensure that the water seal is there and also, this is where you can detect if this closed system has leaks. So how would you know if this whole system has a leak, this is going to give it away. You're not going to know any other place if there's a small leak that's undetectable except through here because this is going to manifest that constant bubbling that would show if air is escaping through the system and manifesting through this water seal. The other time that you might see water or um, bubble kind of release, now it's different from when there is a leak, because what you would see in a pneumothorax, when you're resolving a pneumothorax with a chest tube, is that you would see the air from the pleural space kind of bubble through in that water seal chamber. You'd actually see it come through. So you can tell the difference between a leak and a normal kind of almost like a burp that comes through in this water seal chamber. The other thing that you can watch for is what's called titling. So when a patient takes a breath in, so upon inspiration, the water level goes up and then upon exhalation, 
that little water level goes down. So that's called titling. The last chamber is called the suction control chamber. So this one demonstrates a chest tube drainage unit where we're using wet suction. So we'll mention the implications when it's called a dry suction container, but you'll still see lots of wet suction containers out there. With a wet suction container, uh, you have to fill this to whatever suction pressure, negative suction pressure, is prescribed for the duration of having the chest tube. What do I mean by that? Well, having negative suction pressure applied to the pleural space will expedite the chest tube coming out, will expedite the resolution of whatever the reason is that you have this chest tube. So you want to make sure that it is to this 20 centimeters of water pressure line, which is generally the suction pressure applied if that's what's prescribed or else you're not doing what you need to do. Now, when water bubbles, it does tend to evaporate. So that's another thing you need to keep in mind is that after you fill it up, you know, you're not done for the duration of the chest tube. You need to eyeball it periodically to ensure that it is to that 20 centimeters of suction pressure is met. Because if the water level goes lower, you're not getting that negative suction pressure. Having the water in there is actually a safety net so that it doesn't matter how high up on the wall that you turn that suction, the negative suction pressure, the patient will still only get the amount of negative, negative suction pressure that is shown on that water seal line. Now there are chest tube drainage units out there that are not with water used, um, that use water, it's called dry suction, and that's really just a dial. So, the setup is a little easier. It's one less chamber to have to fill up to the line that you're supposed to fill it up to. You dial it to 20 if 20 is what's prescribed, and then it's the same idea. It doesn't matter how high up this suction goes, you will still um, have whatever the dial is turned to. With that being said, on the wet suction container, be sure that there are bubbles present because if you don't see bubbles in the suction control chamber and suction is what's prescribed to allow for resolution, the patient is not getting any suction pressure. So the bubbles allow you to tell, oh yes, okay, the suction is at the level it's supposed to be, it's turned on. Basically, it's an on-off measure. Bubbling on, no bubbling, off. So, from the point of the chest tube to this tubing that actually attaches to the chest tube drainage unit, you need to have very secure connections. So, upon placing the actual chest tube in the pleural space to the point where you're done, you have to make sure that it's taped and it's secured at every point. So there's at least one point here and the minimum of one point, and you, that's usually kind of a, um, a male-female adapter that you can screw in and ensure that there is a good secure attachment. Also another potential place where a leak could occur and that air could go into the pleural space is at this chest tube insertion site. So first of all, make sure that you don't see any of those little holes stick out because if you think about it, that's going to allow that atmospheric air to go right back into the pleural space. Even if you're resolving hemothorax, you don't want to cause pneumo on top of that. So those little holes need to be securely in that pleural space. The next thing that goes at that insertion site is what's called Vaseline gauze or uh, Vaseline petroleum gauze. It's also called xeriform gauze, and that's just what it is. It's Vaseline petroleum jelly stuck to um, a, a little piece of gauze that allows for an occlusive seal around this chest tube site. And then on top of that, you put four by fours, you could put one of those trach gauze, meaning it has a hole in it, or not a hole, but a slit in it, and that slit will allow the gauze to be surrounding that chest tube. So this way you allow for a nice occlusive seal with that stretchy tape over it. Of course, this is one of those times where you have to monitor for what's called that subcutaneous emphysema, 
which shows that indeed there is air that is coming through the skin that is not supposed to be. Sub-Q emphysema is not a normal finding, but in times when there is potential for air or there is air in the pleural space, that air may come through the skin, and that's what subcutaneous, subcutaneous emphysema shows you, that, that there is air under the skin. Your implications for care is just to palpate it to verify that that's what it is and mark it. So you want to know if it is resolving. So it's in itself, it's a benign finding, but really what it means is that you don't want air in places where it's not supposed to be. Let's talk about clamping for a minute. Just as a rule, you never clamp this chest tube. However, when you have constant bubbling in this water seal chamber and you need to figure out where it is so maybe you can tape it over or whatever you need to do to resolve that leak. What is done is that you clamp for just momentarily to see if you can figure out where the leak is located. Because if you clamp it here and you still see it bubbling, well, it's not up that high. And as you keep going down, you can tell where the leak stops and you can hopefully, and sometimes not, figure out where there's a leak, either in the tubing or at the insertion site. The only other time that you would clamp it for a moment is when this gets filled up sometimes when you're collecting you know, output, fluid output, blood, and you actually need to change over the chest tube drainage unit. So the tubing is clamped for the moment that it takes to change over the connections, and that's it. Let's talk about where the chest tube is placed. Well, if you're resolving a pneumothorax, which is air in the pleural space, air rises. So if you want to resolve that, you want to put the chest tube in the place where the air is located. So generally speaking, and there are you know, deviations, when you are resolving a pneumothorax, it is put into the second intercostal space. If you are resolving a hemothorax or fluid, then it's between the fifth and sixth intercostal space, mid axillary line.